The shield wall formation in Medieval 2 Total War is widely spoken about. However, not much is known about it. In what situations do you want to use it, and in what situations do you want to avoid it? Not many answers can be found on the web. However, today I want to cover that, and in this video we're going to take a look at the shield wall formation in Medieval 2 Total War. So let's get at it. Alright, so we're going to start uh, seeing this Erebor infantry against the heavy goblin infantry. They have pretty much equal stats and we have now put the dwarves in the shield wall and the next we are going to test is how this will perform against the heavy goblin infantry without the shield wall. So now we're going to see the difference between the shield wall and non-shield wall with the same units in the same situation to really portray statistically how this will work out. So the problem with shield walls when you are using infantry and facing another unit of infantry is just look at this. Some of these dwarves have been pushing so far into the blob that they get stun locked and they can't move and they will die very easily. And the rest of uh, the dwarves just stand here and is not able to do anything. Like the one thing they do at least is pushing the enemy back. So in some situations it will be useful. But you can already see that the dwarves are just pushing way too hard into the goblins. So let's see how this battle ends between the dwarves and the heavy goblin infantry. So far, yeah, it's pretty even at the moment. But still, a lot more dwarves are just still getting stun locked over here. And that's just giving goblins a favor. The thing is, when you are facing units which is larger than your own unit, shield wall is especially vulnerable because they will be able to surround and stun lock your units. And it's now looking Only like the enemy force yeah, it's still pretty even, but the goblins are pretty much outnumbering them. Just ignore stuff going on men. in the background. And you see now that the goblins are going to be victorious. They have 60 left and the dwarves are out. And yeah, they ended up with 60 goblins left and the dwarves ended up with two dwarves routing. So now we're going to see the same scenario with uh, the dwarves without the shield wall. All right, we are here for a second scenario. This time it's the same units, but now we don't have a shield wall. So the difference now, as you see, the dwarves are not pushing themselves all the way into this blob. They still have a lot of mass because they are dwarves, but it's not doing them any damage. So now we're just going to speed up and we'll see how the battle commence. So you see, it's still pretty even as it was in the last uh, battle. But you see, as the time goes, the dwarves are actually in the lead. And if we just keep and let the battle going on you'll see that they have 70 and these guys have 78 so at least the dwarves aren't losing this time which is a big difference of course Only and they're now the taking the lead and they are stun locking the heavy goblin infantry and i think these guys are going to rout soon let's see 51 versus 32 and there we go. So this time the dwarves had 46 left and the goblins had 19 or 22. Uh, so you can really see that there is a difference between having a shield wall and not having a shield wall. And it's definitely not worth it. Uh, that's, it's definitely not worth having a shield wall in this kind of situation. So lesson learned, infantry, don't use shield wall against other infantry. Except if you want to push with mass. Alright, so the next experiment we have going on right here is going to be Arches versus Shield Wall. So we have some Territorial Guardsmen with the armor upgrades against some of these Orc Arches. So the thing we are going to do is just let the Orc Arches empty all their arrows and we'll see if the Shield Wall or the non-Shield Wall will have the most men remaining. So. One could surely guess that this tight formation with a lot of shields would yield less damage, but we're going to see how it goes. 
So we're just going to let them empty their arrows and we'll see how many men they have left. And it, I, I definitely think this is very important because in some cases you will come to a shoot off and you want to decide whether to put your men in shield wall or not, definitely. So they have a lot of arrows and we have only lost like 15 men so far. Which isn't too bad, so it looks like it's really successful. 162 men left, alright. But now we're going to take a look at the normal or non-shield wall formation. Alright, same unit with the same armor upgrade, just more not as tightly packed as last time. So let's see how it commences this time. So 162, will they have more or less? That's going to be interesting to see. Because one would think like they're not as tightly packed, so it's going to be harder to hit them. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So now we're actually at the same numbers. And now it's actually looking worse than the shield wall. So the shield wall is actually looking to be a little bit better in this situation. You are actually saving a couple of lives. Uh, by putting your men into shield wall once you are under missile fire. So that's the lesson. You actually saved 10 men there just by doing the non-shield wall. So it's not really a very it's not a very big difference because some of these missiles are luck based of course. So it's about the same but it looks like this is a little bit worse than the shield wall. So here you want to apply shield wall instead. Alright the next situation we have is the shield wall versus the javelins we have brought up some half trolls which by the way is a very very excellent unit they have 40 missile attack and they have some sort of exciting ability which will make this unit just flounder just look at this but we start with 179 we're going to let them empty all their uh, tosses and we'll see how many men we got left or orcs is rather the word so you can see they have some kind of ability which just throw them all to the ground uh, we lost like yeah we lost like 40 men in that wally so these javelins are just deadly 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 and you can see like that was almost the whole unit already after just two or three tosses this is definitely a very very strong unit all right, they're now going to charge in. So we had 40 orcs left after they had thrown in all their javelins when we applied the shield wall. Let's see how it w works out without the shield wall. All right, same situation. Let's see how it works out this time. So they're going to start throwing in their javis. <laughs> We're just going to see the whole unit just bounce like magic carps and one more wally i think that's all 81 left so definitely you don't want to use shield wall against javelin troops because they are just going to focus their entirety on this small section and they're going to be able to just hit your troops very easily so it's definitely much more worth it um just having your units like this when javelin men are throwing javis at you we're now going to take a look at how you will fare against cavalry. Alright, so the next we have is the Morgul Chosen up against the Knights of the Silver Swan. Let's see how many the Morgul Chosen will lose in the initial 10 seconds. So I'm just counting the time here and we're going to stop exactly when we hit 10 seconds. There we go. So now let's take a look at how many we have left. We do have 154 Morgul Chosen left. All right, so we're now going to see how the Morgul Chosen will, will fare against the Knights of the One without the shield wall formation. All right, same scenario once again. I'm going to count the time as they hit. So let's see. That looked like a brutal charge. Let's see how many they will lose in the first 10 seconds. And there we stop. They have lost, yeah, 
a couple more than the against when they use the shield wall. So it actually looks like you might want to use the shield wall when you hit Cav or when Cav is engaging you. And that makes sense because the Cav have a very huge weight and mass stat. So they will inflict a lot of damage on units which uh, can't hold up to that. But when you have a unit which is given a little bit more mass when you put them in shield wall, they will reply much better than they did right here. Alright, so I thought I'd just make a little summary. So the cases you do want to use the shield wall is in the cases where you're facing cavalry or when you are getting targeted by archers. If you are getting targeted by javelins, it's a really bad idea because they can concentrate their javelins on a very small area. And if you're facing infantry, it will not be worth it because you will get your unit stun locked. So that's the lesson of today. But of course there are some cases where you do want to use the shield wall. Uh, even though it's against other infantry and that is for example if you are facing or if you're besieging someone and you need to push very hard through the gate because it's you just need to get through and because the timer is running low you might want to use shield wall just to push your units through really quickly but do notice that you might take some casualties because of it so in general against infantry don't use shield wall but there are some exceptions i hope you enjoyed this uh, little lesson and guide and do comment down below what other guides you would love me to make because i would certainly like to make another guide by the way these guys are using shield wall and they still look amazing minas interiorings an excellent unit but that is it for today i hope you enjoyed this guide and I will see you guys for the next guide.